If you've ever walked out of a bedroom in the morning and opened the door and it's a different temperature in the hallway than it was in the bedroom, this is a zonal pressure problem. If you have ever heard whistling under a door or had a door closed shut without you touching it at all when the HVAC kicks on, that is a zonal pressure problem. So the zonal pressure test becomes a very important piece of diagnostic evidence that's gonna help you make a decision on what exact surgery to do in your house. On this channel, we talk a lot about zonal pressure testing, and I use the blower door in conjunction with zonal pressure testing, which is just basically using a manometer. This is a $500 uh, new manometer from TEC called the DG8. I will be showing you how to use this to do a different kind of zonal pressure testing, not one that's using the blower door, one that's using HVAC pressures. So the way that the zonal pressure test for HVAC effects works is I toss my pressure hose into the room, I close the door on the room, and then I can read what the pressure buildup in that room is with reference to the main body of the house. This room is our studio in our house. And if I was to want to find out how much air leakage there is in this room, how connected this room is to outside versus to the house, I could run the blower door here and then close this door off and put the pressure hose under the closed door to read how much connection there is to outside. That's a useful test. And we have several videos on that as well as featuring it on the TV show, Home Diagnosis. But I did a quick search the other day because I was trying to explain to one of my clients how to run this test for themselves because there are normal homeowners who can afford to buy a $500 manometer to do some testing themselves if there's not an HVAC expert in their town or a diagnostics expert for that matter who can do that kind of thing. And I realized that not only had we not made a video about this technique, but I couldn't find anybody who had made a video about this. So we're gonna correct that right now. So the manometer, this is a one channel digital manometer and that right there is our ductless mini split that heats and cools this studio space, which is about 800 square feet of floor area, about 15,000 cubic feet of air between this and the crawl space below it that is cooled and heated with that machine. That machine is ductless. So what it does is pull all the air that it needs to condition the room from on top of it and then blows all the air that it's pushing into the room uh, at the slot that you see at the bottom. That means that there is no pressure effect on this room from that machine. All of the air going into it is also coming out of it into the room. So if I was to close this door and measure the pressure effects in that room, it's not gonna change because of that machine. Now this house is pretty complicated and I'm gonna send you to other videos if you wanna see more about this house. But suffice to say that in a very simple sense, that machine has no effect on the pressures of this room. Let me show you where this does start to make a difference. Whereas in the studio, we have a Mitsubishi ductless mini split, this main body of the house is controlled with a ducted Mitsubishi uh, heat pump. That means that the duct work is now going to start inducing pressures in different rooms if we set the system up this certain way, which we have, because that is called our central return. That's the only breathing tube that the, our heating and cooling machine, the heat pump, uses to pull air to it. Uh, in a central return system, you send all the conditioned air into the rooms and the rooms don't have their own dedicated breathing in tube for the heat pump. So that's, it, that means that we're pressurizing the bedrooms, we're depressurizing the main body of the house. And so the benefit, the beauty of that is that we've got this air pathway, like a river where air, we know exactly where air is going to go and where it's going to go after it's there. Now in a central return system, there are some HVAC professionals who nowadays are getting really worried about the fact that air can't find its way back to the central return, which is what this zonal pressure testing is going to show us. So let's go upstairs and see this. And I can see from this that my room is pressurized, but it's pressurized to 2.7 pascals. We only worry about this number when that number exceeds five, or if you want to be really anal about it, three. So this number means we don't need to care about this at all. Let's go ahead and nerd out even deeper on this so that you can see some of the more subtle points. So now we're monitoring the pressure in the room with reference to the main body of the house. Again, only 2.8. And we've also got a hot wire anemometer set up here. So I'm gonna put this at the opening of the undercut of the door so that we can see exactly how fast the air is moving and how much air is coming out. Now you can see with this one inch undercut, on a 36 inch wide door, 
we have 36 square inches of opening. Through that opening, we've got 400 feet per minute of velocity times the cross-sectional area, which again is 36 square inches, gives us about 66 CFM of air. Now here's where this is interesting. In a house that's a newer house, that's higher performance than homes 20 years ago, 40 years ago, each room is more airtight and more insulated than it used to be. And so the heat load calculation, which is called the manual J uh, or the load calc, for these rooms up here, this room right here only requires about 2000 BTUs per hour and about 80 CFM on the design day. The design day is like the hottest day that's possible. So you're gonna pump the most air conditioning in there as you possibly can. Generally cooling requires more airflow than heating, although that's a more subtle topic. But this room doesn't require that much airflow. So a one inch undercut is perfectly fine. And you can see that by the fact that we've got our 65 uh, CFM coming out under the door. Now here's what's kind of interesting. The room by room return that we're worried about in this room, you know, we would say, do we need to have a, its own return or do we need to have a jumper duct, which is a duct that goes out of the ceiling and into the attic and down into the, the hallway here, or a transfer grill, which is a, just a hole in the wall that lets air through. Sometimes you put the hole down here into the room and then a hole up there into the hallway. Those things are interesting and they can work if you have a massive pressurization in that room. But if you look at manual D, which is the calculation manual that shows you how to design return for rooms on page N13, the normative tables, the very beginning here is the minimum door undercut gap. And you can see that the way that this is laid out, you can get 100 CFM under the door that's a 36 inch wide door, if you have an undercut of 1.3 inches. And if we use simple math, we find that if we want 80 CFM instead of 100, we all we need is a one inch undercut. Most bedrooms, they're gonna be well insulated and airtight these days, so you're not gonna need more than about 80 CFM to get in there. And by the way, that's both the heating and cooling and the ventilation air that's going into that room. So the jumper duct or the transfer grill or the room return that we would be worried about the room pressurization enough to design in, in the design phase, and then you're stuck with it once you've built the house, actually has a couple things not going very well for it. Number one, you're gonna use something like a six inch round uh, duct for that. If you're dealing with attic ducts or crawl space ducts, and a six inch round duct only has a cross-sectional area of pi r squared, that's 3.14 times r squared, which is uh, whatever, 28 inches or so versus our 36 square inches that we've got on this undercut. And so we're getting more open area on a three foot wide door with a one inch undercut than we do with a six inch round duct. Also on a duct, if you're gonna have it look nice and not just terminate inside the space like in a loft style, you're gonna have grills on both sides of that. And those grills, according to manual D, each of those grills is gonna add a, a static pressure, that's a back pressure basically on the system, of 0 0.03 inches of water column. So that's a 0 0.06 static that we're adding to whatever return grill that we've got in the system. And if you do a room by room return, obviously you're using a lot more ductwork. We're getting a bit into the weeds here, but if, in case you wanna get even more understanding on how all this works, I have a new course that's available on buildingperformanceworkshop.com on HVAC design, because of course all these decisions we're talking about need to be made in the planning phase. This is not something you generally are trying to retrofit onto a house unless mistakes have been made. That course is designed to be understood by both professionals and civilians to be able to get better at HVAC and understanding how this stuff is supposed to work, because there's frankly not enough people who understand this. So this system is running continuously. I have my air handler running 24 hours a day on its lowest speed. And with Mitsubishi, you're able to do that. You can say what speed you want the fan to run in. Uh, there are three. So I will show you the high speed in a moment. But the reason that I'm doing that is because of filtration. We've got 45,000 cubic feet of air in this house, and I want it to be going through the system to filter it as often as possible because humans are dirty. Uh, a lot of pollution is coming from inside this house just by the fact that me and my family are in here. We are cooking and cleaning and being. So I've got my system running 24 hours a day. I now know door open, door closed on low speed, we're good. Let's look at what happens at high speed. Now, as the air handler slowly ramps up to its highest speed, you can see the pressure start to build inside of the bedroom. 
door is still closed, everything is the same. There is no other way for air to get out of that room except around this door, mostly under the door. So that one inch undercut is now allowing us to keep the pressure in that room at less than, well, right at four pascals. And we can actually see that we're delivering just about 80 CFM under that door, which is exactly what the manual D said it would deliver. Now it's moving at about 485 feet per minute under the door. So I hope this has been illuminating and not too nerdy. I apologize for going a little long, but I think our audience tends to like that. A couple new courses are the HVAC Advanced Diagnostics course and also our HVAC design course, both of which are available at buildingperformanceworkshop.com. Please do make sure that you comment or ask questions below if you have other ideas or things that you wanna clarify. I deal with those myself. Like and subscribe, tune in next time.